So now we're going to do some real term structure models. I'm going to start with the easy one, which shows you the ideas, and then we'll make them a little bit harder, and that'll be the pattern for all term structure models, really. This model is the discrete time Vazicek model. Uh, let me show you what we're getting to first. The final result will be an AR1 process for the one period interest rate, just like we had before. And then forward rates, which are a function of the one year rate, so another one factor model. This term looks exactly like the expectations model that we did last time. But now we're going to get risk premiums out as well. So you have the expectations term uh, exactly as before, and then this model also produces risk premiums. I wrote down the model for the forward rate. Once you have the forward rates, you can write down the equation for the yields, or you can write down the equation for the prices. It's just hairy algebra, which isn't that much fun to look at. So we'll, the forward rates are the, are the clearest answer. OK, how do we get there? Uh, this model starts similarly to the expectations model, but goes a little bit different. We start with xt is a state variable, which follows an AR1. So imagine this variable that follows an AR1. And then the log of the discount factor is minus xt, a sigma squared term, and then lambda times epsilon t plus 1. What is this pair of equations? This is just a time series model for the discount factor. The x carries the mean of where mt plus 1 is going to go, and then there's a shock as well. x is a state variable. That's just a convenient way of writing down a time series process for the discount factor. And then we can take its expectations to generate bond prices. So, with this time series model for the discount factor, then we'll generate bond prices as expected future discount factors. There's a bunch of approaches to how do you do this and not let the algebra get completely nuts on you. But this model is so simple, we can just do brute force and then talk about other more clever ways to get at it. So let's do it by brute force. Price of the one period bond is expected discount factor, expected e to the log discount factor. The log discount factor, I wrote down that formula. And what is expected value of e to all this stuff? Well, we get the x minus a half lambda squared sigma squared epsilon plus a half lambda squared sigma squared epsilon just minus e to the x. Now you know why I put the lambda squared sigma squared epsilon term in there to start with. So it would cancel what comes out of here. So my first bond price is just x, the state variable, or the yield turns out magically to be the state variable. I set it up ahead of time knowing this would come out. And you can see the way these models work. You start with a state variable x, which is latent, which we don't see directly. But then bond prices end up revealing the latent state variables. So we can estimate the x from seeing bond prices, or later on, x will become factors, linear combinations of bond prices. This may seem artificial to you, but if you want to, you can start with y, you start directly with y1 in the place of x and just assume a short rate process. That'll work too. Assume a short rate process and a market price of risk. But then you better make sure when you come back that the, the, short, the interest rate produced by the model is the same as the interest rate you started with. Doing it this way, that's guaranteed. Anyway, either way you go, we found our first bond price. Now let's go find our second bond price. So the second bond price is expected value of mt plus 1 times mt plus 2. This is going to get hairy if we're not careful. But e of m e t plus 1 of mt plus 2, that's tomorrow's one period bond price. So we can use that to make the algebra a little easier. So here we go. Let's do the algebra. This first term is, this is our mt plus 1. That xt plus 1 is, of course, the price of the one period bond next time. We have the one period bond pricing formula. I'm sorry, we have the one period bond pricing formula. We have the xt plus 1. That's how x, the transition for x, that's what xt plus 1 turns into. So now we just got to condense all the terms here, bring the epsilon terms together, bring the x terms together, take the expectation, uh, cancel the 1 half sigma squared terms, and what do you end up with? Uh, the price is this formula here. We have the term in x. We have the 1 half sigma squared terms that don't disappear this time. Uh, so that's the price of the two period bond. From the price of the two period bond and the price of the one period bond, you find the forward rate, and the forward rate comes out to that expression. You should fill in that algebra on your own. Probably a good idea to, on your own, go on and do the price of the third period bond. The third period bond minus the, and the second period bond make us the third period forward rate, and so on and so forth. You get this pattern of forward rates out just by brute force doing this kind of algebra. Mm -hmm.